was fantastic for myself and the team and the nation um, to finish on a high. Obviously, we would have preferred to you know finish second, but um, we showed positive signs of you know what we are capable of. And um, yeah, finishing on a high, it gave us that momentum, and uh, hopefully we can prepare well for June and you know take the momentum into that uh, period. And what about the, the reaction that you got at home and uh, from family and friends and, and even at club level when you came back to your club? What was the reaction? Um, obviously, my family were overwhelmed. Um, my club, you know, were very proud of me. Um, especially people in Cork, all my f family and friends and people around me were, were proud of me. And um, it's uh, obviously it was a huge honour to have that birthday when I went back home and everyone talking about me. But um, it's not just about me; it's about the nation. It's about the team, you know, because. Um, if you see the move when I scored, um, you know we, we moved the ball very well, and when we lost it, we pressed, and that's the culture we're trying to create. So it was a, it was a, it was a, it was a nice touch, um, and especially it was a great finish to the to the campaign. And uh, as I said before, we just hope we can take that momentum forward. And do you think you brought that form then into your club form? Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, you know it does give you confidence. Football is a confidence game. And, you know, if you score goals and you know you play well, it gives you confidence into my club level, and you can see how well we're doing. Uh, my club is, you know, slightly different. We play a different style of football, and yeah, you know, we have a good team and you know, a great manager that helps us. Um, you know, that helps us get where we are today. So um, it does help, obviously, when you're when you're doing well at an international level and at club level. Yes. And what about playing in front of the home crowd at the Aviva Stadium? It looks like it's going to be a sellout. Uh, it is amazing, um, you know, when the national anthem went on, you can feel goosebumps all over your body. It is, um, you know, it is an amazing feeling, and honestly, it's um, what kids dream of, and just standing there looking at the stadium, I used to go. Today we learned that the government are backing the, the bid for hosting the Euros in 2028, six years away. You're, you're young enough to consider that that could be within your framework, within your capabilities and possibilities? Yeah, hopefully we can land it. Uh, I think it would be good for the, for the country, obviously, to bring football here. And um, obviously for the, for the players, especially the young players. I'm not so young by then, but hopefully I'll be, still in, I'll be involved by then. But it would be good for the young players and um, as well for the team, obviously, to, to take part in such a you know, big tournament. And hopefully we can land it and uh, see what happens. What are your ambitions club-wise, Doug? Mm -hmm. um, currently, we're, we're league leaders in, in the club, and we're just trying to get over the line. Uh, we, you know, we want to get promotion. Um, you know, we've made a lot of sacrifices. We, you know, we 80 points. Yeah, usually will be enough, but it's a tough season this year, and uh, it's not enough. And we're just trying to get over the line, and hopefully, um, you know, we can get promotion. And as you know, we're in the cup final of the Papa John's, and hopefully, I can get my hand on the silverware, and, and you know, and then hopefully go straight into international and I'll have a fantastic year. But do you have an ambition to become a Premier League player? Of course, every kid has an ambition to play in the Premier League. Um, I would like to be there, uh, ideally with my, my club, but sometimes that might not happen. And um, um, first of all, we, you know, I want us to go back to the Championship and see what we can do in the Championship and see where it takes us. That's enough to you. Thank you. Okay. Hi, Shidozi. Um, yeah, just sort of picking up on what, what Tony said, the Euros, the next Euros are only a couple of years away. Where do you see yourself in a couple of years? As Tony said, you know, I have ambitions to be in the Premier League. Hopefully, I'm, you know, I'm playing on a higher level um, than I currently am in League One. And, um, you know, just, as I said, playing on a higher level and doing well for myself, really. Um, playing week in, week out, which is very important to, to learn the game. I'm 24, going on 25. I want to learn the game. But, you know, we haven't sourced that evidence. And um, hopefully in, in two, three years or four years, I'm, I mean, that... I'm in a better level than I am and hopefully still being involved with the national squad and as I said I hope we land that so I can really um, express myself. So how much was the game against Portugal in November sort of a, a litmus test for you really to see where you are and where you need to be to get to that higher level? I think it was a great test but most importantly the manager gave me a lot of confidence, um, you know, um, Gaffer gave me a lot of confidence going out because as you say in the second half when we've done the, tip, um, the kick off um, you know, I was quite nervous doing that kickoff, but you know, he gave me a lot of belief, and he said I have great dribbling skills just to take it on and put pressure on, and and he gave me a lot of confidence to see what I can do in a big stage, and um, you know, I'm quite um, quite confident in my ability now, and I'm quite ambitious, and hopefully I can continue testing myself at this level to give me confidence that you know the belief that I can do it in a higher level. You got so many attributes going for you. Do you look at certain players in, in the Premier League or, or other leagues and think that's who I could be? 
Um, I try not to. Uh, my managers, I do, obviously, I watch a lot of Premier League games like um, Rashford, Sterling, you know, similar attributes to me. And uh, I want to be players like that. But um, obviously, I, first of all, I have to do what my job is at my club. And in my club, I play right wing back and I can't, you know, dream too far ahead. I have to just focus on day by day and do what's best for the team. And hopefully, in the future, I can, you know, I can evolve into those players that I, I admire. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is always in my ear because um, you know the first time I came here, I was a League One player. And I, you know, I used to come here in awe, looking at Premier League players and you know Championship players who have many caps. So he just said, "Listen, Chio, uh, um, you know you you are capable at this level, and that's why I believe in you." So when you know when the manager tells you that and he says, "Don't be afraid to make mistakes," when you make the mistakes and you know you look back and he, you know he claps you, that does give you a, a confidence boost to keep going. And um, when you have no fear of making mistakes, that's when you're at the best. And uh, I think him constantly, you know, encouraging me, him and Key, it does help me massively. Are you a bit nervous coming into the squad then? Yes, of course. I'm even right now, you know, coming back here, you know, I, um, as I said, I've, I've set a, you know, a huge um, expectation for myself now and I want to keep going. And consistency is the key. Um, you have to be consistently good to be great. And uh, that's what I want to be. And, um, you know, you ha obviously nerves do kick in because you want to do well for yourself, for the club, nation, um, for my family, obviously. So, um, and it's good, it's a good, it's good that I'm not, um, you know, that I am nervous because it just shows that how much I cherish this opportunity and I don't want to waste it. Do you feel like a, it's not that long since you made your debut, but do you feel like a more established member of the squad? Um, um, I don't know. I don't, honestly, I don't know. Uh, every time I get called, I'm still nervous and checking the list, and hopefully I am involved. And when I come the first day of training, I'm, you know, I'm nervous. I'm playing against players, and when the championship, I'm staying in League One. But I just have to get that out of my head. You know, I'm here for a reason. Um, the manager believes in me. I obviously believe in myself, and hopefully I can grow in confidence as the week goes on. Thank you. Um, right wing back role is um, it's a different it's um, it's, a, it's different from winger. Um, he always checks my GPS and they're quite high, especially high speed distance. And I'm a power athlete, you know. He always wants to protect me, um, you know, which is which is good in his side. But um, it's a different role, and I you know I give all my I give my all for the, for the team week in week out. We play Saturday, choose a lot of games in League One. So I think it's a it's a protective measure that he wants to put in place for me, and especially all the wing backs because we're quite explosive. Um, you know, we're quite dynamic and we play a game based on counter attack So it does take a toll on the body and I feel like he does try to protect me. Sorry? Um, on average, I do about 1,000 um, kilometers of, uh, no, yeah, 1, 1K of high speed running. <laughs> uh, 1K of high speed ru um, running uh, each game and uh, I cover a lot about 11K, uh, which is it's a, a lot when you do a Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday and, you know, um, so he does try to protect me in that in that case because I don't have a, a full back behind me or anyone. So I'm up and down the pitch and physically it is demanding and he wants to keep me at peak peak condition because I'm a power athlete. Um, I need to be explosive at every game. This week in training, are you okay? Or oh, I'm fantastic. Yeah, I'm, I'm great. Um, so it's, it's a little different here because I have a lot of uh, uh, you know protection around me. I have wing uh, wing backs and midfielders and. You know, it's a different role here, so I'm able to be more dynamic here, actually. Do you not have a choice I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And they do notice that I do cover a lot of higher high speeds, even in training. They said that my high speed is good, and that's just in my nature. I don't mean to do it, but, you know, I'm just dynamic, and I want to, you know, break lines, and that's how I play. And they do try to protect me here as well, but I'm still young, so there's no need to. <laughs> Thank you. Jared? Yeah, Tony mentioned the ticket sales have been really strong for the two games. Have you a message for the fans that are going to turn out the big numbers for these two families? Um, I hope they enjoy it. I hope we, we create a nice atmosphere for them and um, just, you know, come with your family and make noise for the team because it does help when the fans, are, you know, lift the roof and uh, we hopefully we can, you know, we can work hard and get a, a great result. But um, you know, we just want to display, um, you know, a nice style of football and show determination and dedication in what we're trying to do. And it will take time, as I said before. But I just, you know, most important, I hope they enjoy and, you know, they make noise and uh, have a nice day out. One of your former clubs, Cork City, they're flying at the top of the first division. Are you still keeping in contact? 
Um, I, I'm quite close to Kian Coleman. I think he's the, the club captain. I had him at Cork City on the 19th. So I, I, I do speak to them and, uh, you know, I'm happy what they're doing because um, I heard they have a, a, lot of, um, a lot of fans turning out, which is very important for them because they had a bumpy few years. So it is massive and fans help the club build up again. And they have a lot of young players and I've said it before, young players, you know, it takes time to evolve and hopefully, in, you know, next year they're in, they're in the Premier Division again. Thank you. Um, let's talk about the, the club again. And obviously, we don't get to see as much of you know, the lower league as we'd like. Um, and I just sort of wonder your role at, at the club. And you find, just gives an idea of what, what your role is throughout the game. And then, just, you know, in terms of being more, do you have more of an influence at the club level than, you know, if you're asking me, you know, um, the We have a back three and wing backs and usually the wing backs are usually like as we play here and my thought was previously a right back so in, in Rotherham we have wingers that are wing backs because um, you know we depend on our wingers to get us off the pitch and ball carry and that's one of my strengths so um, you know um, my job is to hope you know bring take pressure off the team get us as high as possible get crosses in the box and you know we play off crosses and we try to make the, the game as fast as possible so the other um, the opposition cannot keep up so we're quite a dynamic team, and I'm expected to, you know, be back post to, to score and be back post to the, the defend, and that's what the manager wants from his players. And he always says that, you know, you give up, you give your all, and 60, 70 minutes if you have to come off, you'll come off. So that's how we play, and then that's my role really, just to make sure that I can, you know, cause a lot of problems and help out the, the, the team defensively. So up and down. So in the sense, in the sense then, when coming to the Ireland team, with that, when you have that much. Uh, I wouldn't say easier, it's a different role in terms of, you know, we do press high as well with, with the Ireland team and, uh, you know, we have to stay narrow sometimes. In terms of, um, you know, defensively, maybe I don't have to be back post defending. But um, and, and I have a different role then to make sure that I'm available attacking wise. So it's you know it's it's differently, but it does take the same amount of effort because obviously we want to be dynamic on the break as well, and we don't want to just sit you know play slow football. We want to be want to keep possession, but we also want to score if we can have the chance to score. So it is different in terms of defensive wise, but I have a different role here in terms of knowing when to be when the ball is on the left side. So I have to be more sharper in the in the national team because there's a lot going on. Yeah, you know, without disrespecting my teammates uh, at my club level, you know, the um, the players I'm playing with the national team uh, coming from Premier League and the Championship, so they're playing at a higher level that we want to be. So you can see the, the different quality, especially when Jeff Hendrick has the ball. Um, you know, he's more relaxed, and you can see the he can see passes that maybe some of my teammates can't see. And um, that's just, you know, that's just the levels, the, the, the difference. And hopefully, you know, obviously my teammates, that's what we're all working towards to, to get to that level. We don't have much time now, so let's try and get around there, uh, Mark? Yeah, just quickly, I'm just curious. I mean, is left wing back role maybe your third one now because it gives you the space to really kind of explode your pace? Um, it, it depends. It depends. And, and um, I, you know, it's not a position that I quietly enjoy. Um, I do it because I love my, you know, we have to. As a footballer, that's my job. I need to do my job right. Uh, I do prefer to be up higher on the pitch because um, if I can, you know, get our centre backs, you know, get our defenders up high with a lot more energy, that's why I can cause a lot more problems. Uh, a wing back, I can explode my pace, but towards the end of the game, I can feel a lot of fatigue because I'm up and down. Well, while while I'm here, it's 70, 80 minutes. I feel like I still have a lot more to give, so it does it does help if I'm higher up the pitch. Oh. What's up there? Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sure. Obviously. James Brass, you know, said obviously you kind of leave one of I think that maybe starts as a, I don't know, maybe as a reminder to you that you know, need to be informed every week to, to get involved with the other stuff. Yeah, it's very important to be playing games for your, for your club to, to, to be here. Obviously, you have to be match fit because we only have a week of preparation before we go into games. And if you're not match fit, you, you know, you put yourself at risk of injury. And it's just so fun that Jamie missed out, you know, he's a good player, but it's a transition into Wigan. And they're doing very well, so I do, I do understand how you know managers can be when a team is doing well. I don't want to make too much changes, but I spoke to Jamie, and he's determined. You know, he doesn't let it get him down. He's he told me he's going to push 
and make sure he gets into the team and hopefully we will see him in June. Hey, just on the club situation last time we spoke, you said that rather than have, have an option, uh, are talks still ongoing or hopefully will be championship next year, but is that just on hold until you see where things are with the club next year? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, my agent and I, you know, we spoke, uh, we've been in communication with the club and I think communication has died now now because, you know, we're focusing on getting promotion. And I, you know, that's not my focus right now. Hopefully, we can get over the line, as I've said before. And, you know, we can talk about contract um, later on. But they still have an option yet. The manager, is, you know, he knows I, I'm still a Rodman player for at least another year. So, and I am quite happy. You know, I'm quite happy. But hopefully, I can, um, you know, I can get us up to the, you know, with my help and the teammates, we can get to the championship. And you know, that's a that's a goal that I've reached. You know, you know, pushing on to the next level. Just a quick word on JJ. The manager's been singing the praises the last couple of weeks. Just. Oh, JJ is oh, very good. Uh, he's a young player with so much ambition, and he's hungry. And he's just been unfortunate that you know we have top strikers who you know keeping him out. But JJ is you know doing well. Apart from all the disappointments, he trains very well, and he's you know he's a key part of what, what we want to do, especially in the long term. And um, no, he's doing very well, and I'm excited for him. And uh, he has a lot of um, you know he shows character. Um, you know, as a player, you know, so big but very agile. And uh, you know very fast, so he's, he can do many things. And that's why you know our, strike, our manager loves it. John, you mentioned your age there, what stage you're in your career, and the fact you broke the team, the squad, like you're going to the Nations League somewhere. Um, is it essential that you're in the championship next season? Yeah, it'll, I want to be in the championship next season because when we're going to the Nations League, we're not playing in one teams, are we? We're playing you know top top uh, countries, so. I want to, you know, push to test myself week in week out. So when we come to Nation League, I'm I'm up to standard really, and uh, it is important to be playing in a higher level because um, you know you test yourself against the best players um, in England. And I, I want to, that's why I want to be. I want to test myself. I want to make mistakes and learn from my mistakes. And uh, you can do that in League One, but it's slightly different in the Championship where you know the ball is moving quicker. And in in this level, when I come to the, the Irish camp and I see how quick they move the ball and you know, the composure. This is the environment I want to be in. I find it, Philip. Uh, Chilo, on that point, um, next season, if you're a champion player, you can't play the uh, Bell Trophy, but you've got a big final coming up. <laughs> I know you're here on international duty, but that final is coming up the week after next. Yeah. Obviously, you have to get a good weekend here, Belgium, Lithuania, a nice springboard into the final. Have you played at Wembley before? I've never played at Wembley before, so... Phil? Yeah, I'm excited. I'm hoping this will be... I can, you know, win that trophy and then I never have to play again. So, yeah. <laughs> so hopefully, um, yeah. Fo my focus right now is um, day by day. You know, you know, get ready for Thursday's training. Hopefully, we can, you know, I be involved on Saturday. And we just, you know, want to take it as it comes. Uh, we're, we're working a lot of stuff, and I think this will help us get towards June. And it's very important that we, you know, we get the results that we want from these two games. And most important, put, you know, put on a good display so we can know that we're in the right direction. And hopefully, you know, this camp will, you know, push push me to go back and, you know, give it all for the for the last remaining eight games we have, so we can all finish the finish the season on a high. And hopefully, I will be back here soon. As a Wembley Trophy winner. As a Wembley Trophy winner, correct. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Stephen Vincent.